Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, Zyto Wellness Webinar, October 3rd. Uh, I can hardly believe that it's October. We were just talking about that. It's just crazy. And out here in Utah, the temperatures dropped, uh, the leaves up on the mountain are changing, so fall is definitely here, uh, and we're excited to be here another month with you. Uh, we appreciate those attending live. Uh, we hope that this is a valuable experience. We have a great pre presentation prepared for you today uh, with uh, um, Catherine Ekbaria. I've known Catherine for quite a while now, and so uh, we're pleased to have her as a presenter, and uh, she'll be speaking to us about hydration here in just a little bit. I wanted, for those of you that have not heard about Zyto before, I wanted to give a brief introduction about who we are and what we do. Uh, Zyto is a, a wellness tool that provides uh, decision data uh, to a user or a practitioner to help further wellness and lifestyle choices. We do that through a device, as you'll see seated right here next to me, called the Zyto Hand Cradle that measures galvanic skin response and measures the skin conductivity. And based on the readings through the hand cradle, we, we analyze this through you know, proprietary algorithms in our software to provide that information back. Uh, we have thousands and thousands of users around the world. Uh, we're growing every day, and it's very exciting to see how this technology has been implemented all around the world. It's awesome. My name is Jeff Crabb. I'm the director of marketing here at Zyto. And I've had the unique privilege of meeting people, uh, customers of ours all around the world, hearing customer testimonials and uh, really client testimonials uh, from practitioners all around the world. And uh, it's just quite a privilege to be in a position like that to see how this technology ultimately impacts uh, and changes people's lives. It's, it's truly amazing. And we hope and we know that if you're here, most likely you've seen those same uh, uh, you know, results as you've run scans throughout the years. Uh, the Zyto technology is not a diagnostic tool, rather it uh, enables people to get data that they otherwise wouldn't have to make the wellness decisions that they're looking for. Let me introduce you and, and share a little bit about uh, who Catherine is and, uh, you know, why we're so excited to have her here. I met Catherine uh, pretty much from the get-go uh, when I first got hired here at Zyto at a holistic dental conference down in Atlanta, Georgia. And since then, we've uh, kept in contact. She's, a, she's a, a strong Zyto user, but beyond just being a Zyto customer, she has a lot of credentials and background in the value of, of not only hydration, but then in the, uh, an approach of holistic dent dental uh, practices. Uh, she is a, a dentist with a background in human physiology. She focuses on integrative biological dentistry and nutrition. She is a certified holistic health counselor, um, which is awesome. Just uh, one more credential to add to her uh, long list of uh, accolades. She's the founder of Reflective Wellness, LLC, which I believe is based out of uh, Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. And she utilizes craniosacral therapy along with, with Zyto technology. So without uh, much more uh, talking on my end, I'm actually going to hand... Um, the, the, the reins over to uh, Catherine. Thanks for being here, Catherine. Thank you, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm honored to be uh, a part of Zyto and uh, a part of this webinar today. Uh, and I hope to be able to share with you some of what I know um, and about the water's role in our wellness, which I have uh, come to experience over the years firsthand, uh, uh, the hard way and then the easy way. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I believe this is actually the conference at which we had met. I might be mistaken, but uh, uh, this is from a few years ago, and everywhere I go where there is a water feature, whether it's natural or uh, man-made, um, you know, I, ha I have an appreciation for it, so that's the picture there. Um, so, an overview for today's uh, presentation. Uh, we want to talk about water as foundation. Uh, we want to talk about signs and symptoms of dehydration. Uh, some of the properties of, of good, healthy water, uh, a little bit about our environment and water, different types of water, sources of good hydration, uh, uh, see on how you incorporate what we're talking about and the information in practice. And so everyone knows our home, our beautiful planet is mostly made up of water. It's 75% water. I love these beautiful pictures that, that we have, I guess, courtesy of our space programs. And just like our planet, really our body, uh, you know, follows suit. 
Um, water is important for um, our health, obviously. Uh, it's important for our thoughts. It's important for the uh, processing of emotions, for performance, whether it's sports, athletic performance, or whether our performance is for or, or at work. Uh, for the purpose of this webinar today, uh, water has been very helpful for me in preparation uh, for it. Obviously, we're using it for cooking, for cleaning. I mean, think of it. Every time that we you know, instinctively want to get clean or rinse something, we rinse our hands with water, right? We rinse our clothes with water. It's been done for, for as long as we've been on planet Earth. Um, uh, obviously, our plants, animals, our pets um, need water as much as we do. And uh, think of when we want to relax. We, uh, we often go to the beach. We often go to a mineral spa, right? Um, even when we go to the mountains, there's usually streams of water uh, that are there. So um, it is really such a big part of our environment. The slightest change in the balance of our environment uh, will make a difference. And uh, this is an image of, uh, of our little goby. Um, this is a watch. Uh, this is a um, uh, a fish that that we've had in our fish tank. This is a picture of our fish tank sitting in a mushroom, and then we've got the um, pulsating zinnias that are corals there. This was in a time where our, our fish tank was really, really thriving very well. Uh, any change in our in the environment in which we live, whether it is the planet Earth or whether, whether we're talking about our cells living inside of our body and tissues, any change in that environment will affect the thriving um, of that. So this is an environment that's thriving, obviously. This one, you can guess, it is not. It is not going to be thriving for very long. It's murky, it's dirty, it's cloggy, right? So the quality of the water that we that our cells bathe in matters, not just the quantity of it, which we know is, is, you know, is a lot. The most important feature of water, um, just to summarize, it's mineral content or electrolytes in your sodium, your potassium, magnesium, um, and its absorbability. So the size of your water molecule clusters will matter. Uh, how it is electrically charged will matter in terms of how it is absorbing into the cell walls or not. If we are feeling thirsty, that's a good thing. That means our body is still communicating very well with us to, to give us indications. Uh, those who feel that, oh, I'm not thirsty, so therefore that means that my body does not need any more water, um, think again. There's actually science that has shown that how this works. In cold weather, uh, we need just as much fluids as in hot weather, even though we are not sweating. Did you know that? I did not. <laughs> you did not. No. So when I when I started a, a residency program in the Bronx back in two thousand four, after having been a dentist for several years, um, I actually remember that my uh, my one of our resident uh, advisors told us that if you want to make sure that you are not getting the flu this year as you're treating the patients, get very well hydrated. So this is a summary slide that uh, pretty much summarizes the details of what I want to go through today. Hydration in a, is, is the key for our vitality, for thriving, for our health. Um, we need adequate hydration to move vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients through our body into our cells and the toxins out of our cells. It keeps our blood circulating, which is mostly made of water. Uh, and it carries the fuel that our cells need for energy. Water helps to move out the waste products from our cells and uh, keep our cells uh, in a state of balance or homeostasis. And our body uses fluids to keep the body at the right temperature, which, protect, which protects our overall health, which kind of uh, speaks to also the previous slide where I was mentioning we do need as much water, sometimes if not more, in cold climate because in the cold weather our body's working harder. Our is 75% water. Um, brain, seven, uh, brain is actually 85%. I am so sorry that I have made that um, typo mistake there. I don't know how that happened. Um, I guess my brain was a little dehydrated <laughs> when I was typing that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the heart is 79%, lungs 80, liver 86, kidneys 83, skin, which is our largest, largest organ, 64%, blood is 83%, lymphatics, our lymphs are 94% water. They are the ones that need 
at the most amount of water in order to process the waste out of our body and our, out of our systems. Let me just put this out there for you guys to think about it. When we have joint pain, do you think that that may have something to do with the amount of water in our bodies? Hmm. In America, we are experiencing, we have been experiencing a bit of a wellness crisis with all of the illnesses that have become um, very chronic issues that have become um, sort of for us to just uh, accept as the new normal in our health uh, and well-being. Um, and you have a list um, that is here. I almost don't want to talk about it because I, I want to talk about what could potentially support or help along with these. But these are some serious health issues, you know, with heart disease, with uh, cancer, with diabetes, with autoimmune diseases. And, you know, back pain um, or migraines, or any kind of pain, it's, it's just become such a part of, of, our, life, of our life these days, unfortunately. Uh, but when we talk about symptoms such as pain or, um, or thirst or dryness or itchiness, uh, we, I just want you to consider this. The symptoms are only the tip of the iceberg. Think of your of your health um, or of, of the body of water that is your body as an as an ocean so some of the very early signs of dehydration very very early signs is when we have dark or concentrated urine or we don't go to the bathroom very frequently or often enough so let's say if we uh, go through a whole day of work and not go to the bathroom from nine to five or just go once that's very infrequent uh, dry skin uh, because dehydration happens in a matter of hours, and our skin already is the organ that has a little bit a less in percentage of water. Uh, dizziness, any kind of, uh, oh, I forgot something as I went from one room to the next, to feeling dizzy. And, of course, uh, one of the most chronic issues with our uh, times today is constipation. So what is, it just, is it just me or like I all of a sudden I'm just like have this attachment to water. I'm just like I need more water. <laughs> As you're talking, I'm just like, oh, my goodness, my body is just reacting. Your, to yes, it is your brain. It is your brain <laughs> kind of, you know, guiding you, you know, kind of basically making all the links, all the yeah. connections there, which yeah. is good. Some of the states in which that we could experience dehydration would be uh, physical exertion, you know, um, exercising, aerobic activities, uh, sun or heat exposure, um, aging, um, sleep. When we're sleeping, obviously, we're not drinking water, so our body is uh, still functioning to do a lot of repair. So it does use some, uh, it does use up a lot of water. Uh, and uh, calcifications, that's one of the things that oftentimes we don't attribute or we didn't use to attribute to uh, dehydration. But uh, when we have calcifications, whether it's uh, sialolites in uh, the dentist see, uh, the salivary gland stones, or kidney stones, or gallstones, uh, yes, nutrition, obviously, lifestyle um, and chemical exposures, all, the, all of that, hereditary factors, but uh, one of the key factors that we want to consider, I'm inviting you to consider, is uh, dehydration. And of course, with medication use such as diuretics, which is intended to actually um, eliminate excess um, water and sodium from the body, we, we may be at risk dehydration, allergies, and, you know, um, one of the other things is, is periodontal disease, um, which we see so often as dentists and uh, may not, not actually think of dehydration as one of the first uh, key factors. And, of course, during pregnancy um, or any female-related uh, issues. So, uh, gentlemen, the next time that you may find that the women in your life might be acting like it's that time, offer them kindly, lovingly a glass of fresh water. That's awesome. Now I have a quick question just here. Um, what are some of the signs that you see as a dentist? Um, like, can you identify right from the get go if dehydration is a contributing part of? So, you know, are you so going to get to that? Or? That question. That question came right at the time that I am presenting the next slide. So Perfect. I hope this slide answers. <laughs> Great. It. Yeah. Absolutely. So the oral signs. <laughs> so thank you for that question. Uh, the oral signs of dehydration. Uh, one would be halitosis. Uh, or uh, bad breath, uh, dry or chapped lips, uh, dental cavities, uh, gingival bleeding, uh, which often comes with some level of dry mouth, uh, uh, your calculus buildup, that tartar buildup that uh, no one likes to, uh, to have removed because it's not comfortable, uh, and periodontal disease, uh, which uh, uh, basically is gingivitis or gingival disease that has advanced now uh, and leads to loss of the periodontal ligaments that hold the teeth in place. 
uh, leads to eventually a loss of the bone of the jaw that holds the teeth in place, and unfortunately the teeth can fall out. Uh, bruxism is a sign of, of further dehydration, and we'll explain a little bit more as we go along. And then xerostomia, which is the um, dental word for dry mouth. Xerostomia typically is associated with people who are either going through very chronic health issues and treatments, so, such as patients with cancer, for example, who are going through chemotherapy or radiation, uh, or people who through age or because their immune system has become um, uh, suppressed uh, will not be producing enough saliva. Um, but again, uh, all of what leads to this starts at the, at the point of the body being dehydrated. So I, to kind of build off of that, we have a question from a, uh, someone here live. How quick, let's say hydration hasn't been an important part of my lifestyle. How quickly can I make that a priority and rehydrate my body to the point that it needs to, to the level that it needs to be hydrated? So you can start today with a glass of water and we'll, exp I'm, I'm going to explain a little bit more um, as we go on uh, what you can do. You can always at this moment uh, make a better decision as far as your health is concerned and move forward. And you'd be amazed how the body will respond uh, positively uh, to a proper and consistent way of improving the resource that you're giving to the body. So think of it this way. If 75% of our body in general is made up of water, then 75% of what we place into our body should consist of water rather than solid material. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and think of it, just like this is a little blurry and looks a bit dry, you know, if you ever feel like, oh my God, I'm getting a little dizzy, a little blurry as we're talking about, think of water. So risk of dehydration, if you lose uh, even 2% of your body's fluid, your overall performance will considerably drop. And if you lose 5%, you can find yourself in, in, in heat exhaustion or just exhaustion uh, and at the risk of health issues. And if you lose 10% of the body's fluid, we don't want to talk about what you're at risk of. So this is an article uh, that uh, from the NIH talks about the hydration equation, updates on the water balance and cognitive performance. And, um, and the, um, you know, the result really, considering that in the, a happy brain, a healthy brain is 85% hydrated, is that even if we have 1% to 2% drop in our water um, content in our um, hydration, basically, so water and electrolytes content, we will um, affect our brain's, our brain's performance. So common symptoms of dehydration, fatigue, as we mentioned, uh, constipation, digestive disorders, high blood pressure, cholesterol. Uh, these are all states in which uh, the lack um, of, the, the, uh, of the proper amount of water, the proper quality of water, and the lack of the proper exchange of the nutrients and electrolytes between the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell, the extracellular and intracellular components, they will all lead to the imbalance overall imbalance in the body, whether it is with enzymatic activity when, it, you know, when we're talking about dehydration or whether it's uh, removing water from the body to provide it to other parts of the body. So think of it this way, the body's priority is to actually always maintain uh, its, uh, its primary organ, which would be the brain. And, and so um, the brain, even though it's 1 50th of the body weight, it actually uh, uh, has 20% of the body's circulation. And so we need 20% of that water. So the brain takes priority in getting the water. So guess what? If we're missing water or nutrients or electrolytes, the body's uh, responsibility is to feed the master organ. And so it will pull out, um, from, pull out water and pull out minerals from where it needs to. Uh, respiratory troubles um, and uh, weight issues, skin issues, um, joint problems, you know, cartilage is mainly water. Dehydration increases the, uh, the potential for damage uh, and delays repair. So to answer the question that we had uh, a few minutes ago, uh, when can you or how quickly can you make, uh, make a change if you didn't drink before, uh, very, very quickly today, make that, make that improvement. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, what choices you have. Uh, this is one of my favorite um, uh, doctors and researchers, Dr. Uh, Batman Galich, which we 
uh, whom we call um, dearly Dr. B, um, he has basically in the last uh, 30 years put the concept of uh, looking at hydration from a medical and scientific perspective uh, you know on the map for us on in the Western world uh, and uh, and he basically has you know has several books um, it is his book that I um, that I know you guys are actually raffling off today it's a fantastic book and uh, you know he has talked about um, the role of water in our health and wellness and how we can actually use hydration as a therapeutic modality <clears throat> So um, this is the book, um, and uh, it has been translated into many languages. Um, he does um, explain that water is um, uh, is not a um, an inert material, and uh, it is a a transport material. It is a solvent. He explains how the water holds the integrity of the cell wall, and so when you um, uh, learn more about his presentation from his own words, uh, you will be amazed at what your body can do with water. Uh, some of the research papers that he uh, that, that have been written on the topic uh, where he had his uh, knowledge, Dr. B's information and, and, uh, and um, contributions have been taken into account. Uh, talks about asthma, lupus, uh, allergies. Um, he basically was able to uh, treat uh, about 3,000 patients under very, very high stress conditions uh, who were suffering from bleeding ulcers and uh, very, very painful ulcers with simply water. So when you learn about his story, you'll learn more about that. The That's physiological awesome. effects of it is, isn't it? It's, it's amazing. It, yeah. It is amazing, and, and, and we're very blessed to have physicians and scientists who, who go that extra mile and then who go even farther in, in terms of educating us and sharing their knowledge with us. So um, the physiological uh, effects of dehydration cure pain and prevent cancer. Uh, you know, he's talked about how, again, the the... Uh, scientific process is with uh, with water actually coming in and uh, and allowing the body to do its own work. We're not really saying that water is a cure. Uh, what we are really saying is look at what doctors have done to treat their patients. Look at what the science has said and let's see what we can do in terms of improving our lifestyle, our water intake, our water quality today to give our bodies the is to do its own curing, its own healing, its own release of what it doesn't yeah, need. That's awesome. Um, so thirst is easily suppressed, and, and it could lead to a misperception that we don't need water. And uh, what I want to submit to you is the next time that you are feeling hungry, and the next time that you feel like you're craving something like chips, consider that you may actually be thirsty and also consider that water in its natural form has electrolytes in it. So you want to have water that does have minerals. And Dr. B actually talks about the importance of having salt, full good quality salt, not just sodium, but full good quality salt that has other trace minerals in our hydration program. So, um, and then he also had talked about, you know, having a paradigm change with respect to our approach to pain. He said, basically, when you have pain, we know as, a, as physiologists that pain is a sign that something isn't right in our body. There is an imbalance. There is something that we need to address. And so when we have pain, he was saying, consider that the cell is trying to communicate to you that it is suffering. So see what you can give to it to help it along well consider 75 percent of every cell is made up of water so you do the math so acid or alkaline uh, one of the um, uh, researchers that has won a nobel uh, prize in medicine for his research is dr otto warburg uh, who kind of has brought to our attention and all of the which are the energy centers of the cell and uh, and where 
the uh, issue um, happens when there is not enough oxygen in, in, inside the, uh, the cell and where the um, cell basically is suffocating and the environment of the cell um, changes its, uh, its pH and then we end up with uh, more risks of this disease and unfortunately uh, cancer. So uh, basically from a dental perspective as well, um, consider dental disease. Uh, a sign of dehydration. It's not an early sign though, it's a little bit more on the advanced side. Um, and I want to talk about uh, environment. I want to talk about the environmental uh, risks uh, that we have. This book that um, everyone can have access to, uh, it is the President's Cancer Panel that in 2008-2009 did an annual report. Uh, so the NIH and a lot of uh, other uh, scientific communities are involved in putting this together. This only addresses the environmental risks for cancer, um, but you can consider that if cancer is an end, uh, end uh, uh, result of, of a chronic or a series of imbalances in our body, uh, whatever the root cause may be, uh, if we consider cancer as the end result, then let's trace it back and see, okay, what we can look into that we can remove maybe from our life or what we can add or what we can change. So some of what they explain, and that would be on page 53 of that booklet, is uh, the contamination of our water supplies. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if, if you don't know about it, um, and unfortunately uh, we do hear about it on the news, our water supplies are not what they used to be. Uh, we are grateful and we are blessed that we do have potable water coming out of our taps and out of our showers compared to a lot of other countries. So I do want to I do want to say a blessing and a thank you for that. Uh, and at the same time, uh, let's see what we can consider uh, improving at, with what we already have and how we may be able to contribute to uh, in a positive way to the environment and to that planet Earth, that beautiful planet Earth that you saw at the beginning of the of this uh, presentation. So our wells, our um, our public sy uh, water uh, systems, our bottled water, water disinfection byproducts, uh, all of these are some issues with contamination. So we want to invite you to think outside the bottle. Um, we, yes, uh, we have terminology that comes with these uh, containers called pure, fresh, clean taste, alkaline, alkalized, um, <clears throat> purified, uh, you name it, we have it. And the latest one, and I haven't with my, um, with my, uh, the latest edition to the family of container waters is boxed water, which uh, my niece has actually written a blog article about. She was furious when she saw it, and uh, and she said to me, but auntie, it said on it, boxed water is better. And, uh, you know, I did actually, to her, uh, to her fright, I bought a boxed water. It did not taste better to me. <laughs> um, so um, the... Uh, one uh, one documentary that I would invite you to look at uh, is called Tapped. It actually addresses and you know the issue uh, we have um, we have discovered um, in the world of science and environment with uh, bottled water. The fact that it is made up of plastic, the fact that it uh, that it is not really uh, it is not at all biodegradable. The fact that they there are chemicals that are hormone disrupting and that could cause danger and cancer and you could actually look into the uh, environmental cancer book that I just showed you about it as well. It's a disaster. Potential causes of dehydration in our modern society. Uh, again, these are from that, from that book. So this is our government trying to educate us about what's going, out, what's going on in our, in our uh, systems. Uh, we have chemical contaminants, we have radioactive contaminants, we have electric power lines, we have electromagnetic energy, all of which can affect what's on the right. It may lead to health issues, it may lead to medications that may have uh, negative side effects. Um, it can pollute our air, it can turn our foods into a more acidic state um, without necessarily the proper minerals. Um, and then think about it, electromagnetic stress is a big one. I mean, right now we're sitting in front of our computers, we're using our phones. I'm right now on the phone and in front of my computer and I have a tablet on the side. So yes, I do need my water to keep hydrated. 
So while you're, I, I this is kind of a controversial point, and and maybe uh, at least it has been in, in neighborhoods that I've uh, lived in. But what is your opinion on uh, cities and things like that adding like fluoride to water supplies, especially as a dentist? So as a, as a biologic dentist, uh, I think you know my my take on that. Um, and as a uh, my my I'm, fluoride is not my favorite thing, and uh, I have been using and my family's been using uh, um, uh, as a person whose uh, whose background is in physiology and as someone whose uh, work is in, involves a lot of nutrition and coaching, and you know with the clinical uh, signs that I've seen, um, my personal my personal take on fluoride is that we can actually have a better uh, we can have a better way of preventing dental issues if we're using fluoride to prevent dental cavities and what i'm actually talking about is the better way hydration and getting our body to a state where it's got uh, more of a homeostasis with its electrolytes will actually in in conjunction with a good uh, nutritional diet will actually um, eliminate the worry about whether to add a particular chemical into our water to prevent decay or not. Think of it this way. If you're thinking of fluoride as a um, magic pill that could solve the problem of dental decay, it ain't happening. We've had fluoride in our waters for a long time, and um, I'm not seeing fewer cavities or fewer uh, cases of, of, uh, of oral health issues from it. So it's not a direct correlation. And we'll leave the extra, extra debate um, for the holistic dental conferences. How's that, Jeff? For that, no, that's great. I just, yeah, it's something that I know that is, you know, a common issue that's debated back and forth around America. So, and can't, yeah, probably around the world. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, there are a lot of uh, places in Europe that have done away with it, actually. Um, so. Um, okay, I, well, I do want to mention electromagnetic energy, um, and I, we did touch upon it because it is actually one of the sources of dehydration in our modern day society. So, for every, you know, my th my thing is for every hour that you're using um, your uh, electronics, consider having, you know, at least uh, a tall glass of water by your side, and you'll find that you may find that you actually feel heated from being in front of a computer if you're not properly uh, fed or hy hydrated. Probably fed. <laughs> That's, that was a funny one. Okay, so, uh, and, uh, and of course, when you travel by air, so all my Zyto friends, when they travel for their, um, for their trade shows, you guys need to be uh, very well hydrated. Extra we hydrated. hydrated. You, get exposed, <laughs> you get exposed to the UV rays. You get exposed to the air pressure changing. Uh, so uh, think about it. Your cells bathing in water, right, they have to adjust to all of the pressures, all of the stresses, whether they're emotional stresses, chemical stresses, uh, magnetic stresses from your um, uh, tablets and computers or whether it's just the air you know changing right I mean think of it this way you go uh, hiking on the mountains the altitude changes your body has to uh, adapt and it's very difficult right um, so uh, a little uh, touch upon the physiology of biologic medicine um, I just want to look at my time here uh, and um, if you can, the, the, the concept of, of biological medicine uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas Rao kind of um, uh, talked about is if you can bring about a shift in your um, pH make it slightly alkaline then uh, you can reduce the state of oxidation or rusting or breakdown in the body and then the minerals will get into the cells better and the body can do anything it needs to do, including repair, releasing of toxins, so it can heal itself. Okay? So that brings me to the concept of pH. And in, a, in the dental world, we are familiar with this. We tell you, don't eat sugar, right? Stop drinking that orange juice. Why do you think that is? And really all of that, the heart of it is acidity. So uh -huh. when we talk about pH, the potential of hydrogen, is, is basically how much hydrogen can... Um, be donated uh, from that substance. So if something is very, very acidic, the, the pH scale is from 0 to 14. If something is very acidic, you have, you're on this side of the color scale. 
and when it's very alkaline, you're on this side. And neutral is about 7, and our blood is actually 7.365. And our body will do everything it can do and needs to do and in order to buffer our blood, should our blood become a little acidic, because if it becomes acidic, we're not going to last. Like, we're going to die, basically, very quickly. So some acid loads. Um, <clears throat> acid is a byproduct of cell metabolism and repair. Uh, and so typically the urine pH is acidic because it is excreting acids. Uh, and the body has uh, buffering systems. So if the body becomes too acidic because we are um, putting too much, uh, let's say, preserved foods in our body uh, or water from bottled water that actually also brings within it to our body chemicals that could potentially turn our body acidic, then our body has buffering systems. And, and how do we buffer acids? We do it with minerals. Okay? Uh, this is the buffering, uh, this is the uh, typical pH of, of our body tissues. Um, so um, our saliva is kind of the acidic side, um, but uh, it can actually, we can actually change the environment of the saliva and, and make it a little bit less acidic and, and therefore more uh, conducive to our teeth uh, remaining healthy. Uh, and our pancreatic juices, our pancreas actually um, secretes the enzymatic uh, juices that are very alkaline. So if you've ever heard of taking in lemons, fresh lemons, uh, even though the lemon itself is acidic, and so yes, your teeth do get exposed to that acidity and you do want to rinse it off with neutral water afterwards, but when you do eat certain foods that are such as a whole lemon, okay, I'm not talking about fresh lemon, like a te teaspoon of lemon juice, but when you drink, when you have the whole lemon with the white skin and the pulp and, you know, the fiber and everything, uh, you actually are getting the pancreas to... Um, secrete its, uh, its juices that are very alkaline and it, the result, the end result of having that fruit, uh, there are six layers and uh, each layer, uh, it works in layers. So the first layer, if it's not enough to neutralize the acidity in the body, it goes next to the next layer, the next layer, the next layer. So let me look at this for, for a second. Minerals, okay? Uh, when the body has been attempting to neutralize the acidity of the tissues unsuccessfully, and we're still putting in more, more acid than the body can excrete, uh, then it will look to minerals in our body if it doesn't have enough in the, in the source of foods and water that we take in to basically neutralize the acid. So when we have our teeth leaching out minerals, when we have our joints leaching out minerals, and then we end up with joint pain, uh, think of where the minerals are going out. Right? So, of course, how you, you know, um, uh, your, your, I guess, uh, starting point of your mineral content is important. So, yes, there is some uh, importance, uh, you know, a lot of importance when the baby is growing in the mom's, in the mother's womb, you know, the, what the mother is eating, how the, how the child is eating, you know, the hereditary factors are there. However, um, you know, once we are you know, here, and we, we can make decisions, and we need to make it to pay attention to that. Uh, there are acidity symptom checklists that um, most uh, practitioners who um, address this issue will, um, will have, and you can think about it. Uh, are you suffering from loss of memory, insomnia, migraine headaches, depression? Are you having issues with learning? Uh, do you have uh, a leaky gut that you know about? Do you have fungal infections, candida issues? I mean, from an H from A to Z, there's a list of them. Okay. Allergies. One of the main things that Dr. B actually, Dr. Mark Wenglish talks about in his water in his book is is allergies. Um, again, some of the chronic acidic states, uh, and then caries. As I, as I was mentioning, tooth decay. Uh, is basically the result of breakdown of the teeth by the minerals leaching out and the bacteria that specifically uh, have, uh, have a role in that are strep uh, streptococcus mutans, but they're, they're, the bacteria's byproducts, their waste product is acidic and they feed off of sugar, which is why we always tell you not to put too much sugar 
um, for a long period of time in the environment of your mouse because you don't want to basically feed those, those bacteria and activate them. But really what's happening is the demineralization of the enamel. So I have had, uh, when I moved from Canada to the U.S. and I got my board exams and everything, one of the major things that I noticed uh, in, in different parts of, of the East that I've worked at is that people would come in and say, uh, you are like the fifth dentist I'm coming to. I keep going to dentists and my fillings keep falling out. They're not doing a good job. And then I would examine them and I would do some nutritional counseling, which sometimes they didn't want to hear. And I would explain that, you know, from taking a history of what they were drinking and what they were eating, well, you don't have uh, enough mineral in your um, in your um, not that you don't have a mineral in your teeth, but your teeth are being exposed to so much acidity and oxidative stress that they cannot hear the teeth. Um, it is possible to actually, um, this is kind of like a little bit of a process of how the minerals can leach out as the acid kind of hits the tooth and create a little bit of a, a demineralized area. And the, and the enamel is, is about 98% mineralized, so a healthy enamel. So think about, you know, it's a pretty good place for the minerals to leach out of the body. Uh, but if you are able to change the environment of the saliva and what you're eating, you can, if you catch this at the right time, you can actually encourage the tooth to remineralize, but only when it's in the enamel state, not when it goes a little bit deeper. Then you've got, you know, your overly acidic symptom checklist. Um, a little bit faster, you've got your intermediate systems with, you know, colitis and, you know, numbness and insomnia. And then the, the more advanced ones with autoimmunes and, um, uh, you know, uh, cancer issues, diabetes, you know, things like that. And what they all have in common is uh, a state of acidity, but a state of breakdown, a state of oxidative stress. And with pH balance, uh, if you consider yourself uh, completely neutral, good for you. If you, are, if you can be here, perfect. But with everything we're putting into our body, with the environment, the stresses, the computers, the, even the negative thoughts, right, the worries and everything, uh, we are utilizing a lot of our resources, our, of, our, of our body's original resources, uh, minerals, water. So we actually are heading more towards the acidic sites. So we need to work a little bit harder um, to have, you know, some raw food, some alkalized water, and, you know, do some emotional and mental work, uh, deep breathing, stress relief. Uh, in order to support our body. And really oxidative stress um, is uh, rusting, right? Example of an apple. If you if you cut this apple and put some fresh lemon juice on, on, on one side, it will actually rust and brown a little slower because um, the lemon juice will have the vitamin C, it will have antioxidants, right? So what are sources of free radicals that lead to oxidative, or when we have oxidative damage, we basically, um, uh, and we, we, we do uh, have oxidative processes in our body as we are living and breathing, just breakdown of food, right, requires breakdown, requires oxidation before things can be absorbed properly. But, you know, just our metabolism, our breathing exercises, obviously when we're exposed to pathogens, our bodies uh, dealing with free radicals, air pollutants, uh, the water, those pesticides, those, those chemicals that actually can knock off one electron off of our healthy um, healthy atoms and then our cells become kind of lost uh, looking for uh, balance and, and in that way uh, we end up with uh, with uh, stress in our body and, and issues. Um, and uh, so free radicals can damage uh, collagen in our body, uh, which can lead to wrinkles. It can damage elastin in our blood vessels, which can lead eventually to hypertension. Um, and, uh, you know, in very severe cases, and think of uh, oxidative damage as ionizing radiation. When, when we talk about ionizing radiation, so if we're talking about gamma rays, x-rays, right, the UV rays, it's basically knocking out an, uh, knocking out an electron from our healthy uh, atoms. Uh, concept uh, is shown just very, very, very briefly here, and I apologize for going so quickly, um, that, uh, you know, a, a, an antioxidant, um, let's say, atom or molecule or the behavior of, of an antioxidant is that it has an electron to donate to one 
to an atom, that's an ion that is missing it. Okay, so this would be missing an electron here, and we'll try to join with other free radicals in order to find and balance itself, and then we actually end up with, with a bigger issue. So we need to provide our body with sources of uh, free electrons, and water is one of the best sources. Uh, when we're talking about um, um, providing that free electron, we're talking about an oxidation reduction potential. Those of us who've done chemistry, organic chemistry, we might remember that we used to have these equations on redox reactions. We had to balance the oxidation and reduction sides of the equation. Okay? So how we measure the potential of, of, of a liquid uh, in terms of what it can give us in, uh, in free electrons. We measure it with millivolts. Uh, we're measuring the active hydrogen atom that actually has an, elect an extra additional uh, electron in its outer shell. And, uh, and typically we get a negative reading. So the higher the negative number, the let's say the more free electrons that that substance has to offer our body to help our body do its own repair. Uh, so, talking about water as a source of energy, uh, we have different kinds of water. We have glacial water, spring water. If you're fortunate enough to still go to those parts of the world, like Lourdes, France, or, or in the Himalayas, or certain uh, parts where you have the water rushing down the mountain, and it's still you can still get a glass or, or, or just your hands under it and drink it, Please think of me when you do. Um, for the for the rest of us, where you know we're, we are blessed and we are grateful for what we do have: um, our well water, our tap water, our filtered water, our reverse osmosis water, our alkaline waters, and our alkalized waters. Which in uh, in medicine, uh, if you're looking into the research um, that has been done, it is considered electrolyzed reduced water or ionized water. Um, so if you do want to do further research, which I'm happy to. To support you with, um, go to scholar.google or go to PubMed and look for that term. The World Health Organization has stated that reverse osmosis water is not a healthy water for long-term use because of the essential minerals that are removed from the water. Um, so right off the bat, let me tell you which water I really don't recommend. And I know that a lot of holistic dentists like this water because it removes everything, including fluoride, but it also is considered uh, electrically dead water. And so thinking about antioxidation, if you have a, an ORP meter, which is something you can get from uh, Milwaukee um, equipment or uh, they have other companies, uh, you're talking about um, the um, uh, negative uh, ORP being what you're looking for. So like green tea is giving you like about negative 80 ORP, oranges, uh, then you've got the positive, which and the more you go on the positive side, the more oxidation or breakdown or rusting you are experiencing. Okay? So what is the best water to drink? My understanding, based on my research and my experience, uh, is structured microclustered ionized water that I mentioned is also known as electrolyzed reduced water, which is which has properties that you will find in those parts of the world, like in Lourdes, France, the Himalayas, that they consider healing water, quote unquote healing water. So many bottled water products are basically just purified water with inorganic minerals, which if you're adding inorganic minerals to your water, like baking soda or calcium, if they don't have the ionic charge that, that they need to have, that nature usually gives us, um, you are heading uh, potentially for other medical troubles because you can affect the pH of your body in an imbalanced way. So be very mindful that acidity and oxidative stress, they have to kind of be taken into context together. Okay. Properties of, the nat of nature's healing waters is that it is structured. So the water molecules position themselves to make a hexagonal shape, kind of like a nice uh, perfect snowflake. Um, they have smaller clusters. They are pr uh, providing you with a free electron, so they're antioxidative. And they're obviously free of synthetic harmful chemicals, and you know they have their source minerals. So I do want people to kind of think of this as if you can, if and when you can get this, this is your um, this is what you can utilize to 
make effective change and uh, positive change in your body's health. So uh, microclustered water, again, think of a cluster of grapes. If you're having uh, two or three grapes in that little cluster, you can put them in your mouth. If you've got like a, you know, a bunch of 30 of them, you can't fit it in. Okay, so we're talking about having a low rest resonance vibration to allow for the closer association between the water molecules so that they can position themselves in that beautiful hexagonal shape that nature intends for us and that renders the water more absorbable and more uh, hydrating right so it's really good to have good quality water but if it's not getting into your cells right it's not doing the job you're wasting your time and your and your um, body's uh, energy here so um, this is just an example of you know when you have smaller clusters of water it penetrates to sell better and then um, looking at the uh, the uh, nuclear magnetic resonance technology measuring the water cluster size um, basically bottled water size is larger the hexagonal ionized or electrolyzed reduced water is smaller reverse osmosis tap water there are larger molecules okay so if you have ever experienced drinking water like my dad has, has you know used to tell me and saying oh my god I'm bloated I can't drink anymore or I feel so full I can't even eat that's the sign that chances are that water uh, has, has such large uh, clusters and has has properties that are not allowing the water to actually absorb into your cells and that's why you're feeling bloated Okay. But if you're drinking good quality water and then you feel like, you know, an hour later you're, you're thirsty again, that means your body is receiving that water, utilizing it for expelling toxins and metabolizing waste and actually is asking you for more. Okay. Mm, that's very so how much? Yes. So how much water should we drink? Okay. If you're intending to, you've, we've, we've heard that eight cup of eight cups a day right the mayo clinic and the mayo clinic is conservative actually recommends a minimum daily intake of 11 and a half to 15 and a half cups of water they distinguish between females and males and you know i'll leave that up for our audience to decide uh now if you're not drinking these many cups of water my suggestion is start with one and two start with maybe um, you know, four ounces every half an hour, just slowly, slowly introduce it into your body. Please do not add anything in a big, a large quantity right away when you're, when you're not accustomed to it. See how your body responds to it. Now, this is to uh, maintain the current function of your body. But if you're dealing with something like a cold or uh, anything like that, you want to increase your intake. Okay, so this is for maintenance purposes. So some hydration tips, drink your water in small amounts and more frequently. Uh, as a dentist, it's heaven for us to know that people are taking in pure water. Like when I say pure, I'm just saying simply water, not flavored water, not lemon juice in there, just, just water that neutralizes the acidity in your mouth. So as a dentist, thank you if you're doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we, we want to encourage you, I want to encourage you also to not drink ice water uh, very quickly. Now, if you're an athlete, maybe, uh, but uh, you want to drink water that's room temperature, that's closer to your body's temperature, because, again, you want to regulate what you're eating in order to absorb it. You actually want to give your body a resource to utilize, to do you some good. Right? Um, and then please don't dehydrate yourself for weight benefits. It's not going to uh, last and, and work very well. Um, so I've, I've seen people go on these super duper shakes or diets, uh, which as a nutrition person, I'm not a fan of. And then and they, they have lost weight and they think they look great. And I see them, you know, a few months into it and their skin is wrinkled and sagging and just dead looking. And I'm like, oh boy. So, um, uh, so that's, you know, definitely something. Uh, and then, you know, uh, consider that our, our famously acidic drinks like caffeine, soda, teas, uh, they do dehydrate us. Now, I'm not, I'm not a big opponent of coffee when it's made with good quality coffee and you know, good quality water. But um, this uh, soda pop uh, is extremely oxidative. If you want to kill yourself, um, please go ahead and, and drink it. That's that's my take on it. I'm sorry. I'm 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 kind of rough about that. Um, okay. So this is a, a friend of mine who does infrared thermography. This is an image of a before and after uh, of someone who had had a knee injury uh, from skiing. Um, and uh, so on the left, uh, before 
a different alhamdulillah. And after drinking 30 minutes after drinking 10 ounces okay so you can see the improvement it's just it's visual like I don't have to be a thermographer to notice right you, this is just a visual thing so if we can affect again going back to that question that our friend asked at the very beginning uh, about how quickly can they make a change if they haven't been drinking water or, already you can with the right quality and quantity of water make uh, make effective change your body will take the water that you drink and utilize it to its best knowledge so you may not know where it needs to go first but your cells do know that other sources of good hydration uh, besides water that you know as close to nature's quality as you can find uh, my favorite would be coconut water buyer beware uh, fresh please and in glass containers and you know again do a little research on the company that extracts the coconut water so that you know that it is not adding additional issues for you fresh fruits fresh vegetables uh, they do contain water they do contain fiber they do contain minerals sodium um, so you know I am a big fan of fresh fruits and vegetables and fresh herbs all in moderation um, and uh, don't forget the salt. You do want good quality salt because you do actually need the salt for the ionic exchange between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell in order for the cells to excrete the acidic waste product uh, in order for the cells to then have that alkaline balance. Now, we again, perfect scenario. We want uh, a slight alkalinity, like a 7.5 right 7.6 pH uh, but because of all the oxidative damage and stress and acidity that we are exposed to every day in our modern society we need to kind of up our efforts of supporting ourselves to do that acid alkaline balance so the good quality salt I tend to like um, good quality sea salt or Himalayan salt. Um, I'm not a big fan of the white salt, just like I'm not a big fan of the white sugar or white flour for obvious reasons. And then one other way that I uh, recommend is uh, su supplement your body's minerals through bone stock or if you're a vegan or vegetarian through uh, sprouted, um, uh, good quality sprouted uh, legumes and, uh, and sort of go from there. So some vegetables and fruits uh, that will provide you with good quality vitamin C, which is a great antioxidant as well, and your potassium and your, and your um, electrolytes would be your cucumbers, your celeries, your beets, your sweet potatoes, your, you know, your pumpkins, right? Uh, your berries, your melons, oranges. So um, again, these are also sources of hydration. So uh, if you're drinking water good quality water 75 percent of the time and the other 25 percent you're incorporating a lot of this you're good to go um a little interesting research about uh thought and emotion and um uh, and water um if you get a chance to look at uh, masari emoto's work or his books uh take a look at this beautiful hexagonal shape right so think hexagonal as nature's perfection of geometry, perfect geometrical figure as far as water is concerned for us. So just to summarize, the basis of vitality and long life is water. Over 75% of our body is water. Every function in the body takes place in water. We are bathed in water. We live in a world made up of water. And energetic communication between cells, which happen through the uh, interface of glial cells that are our, our, our cells in between our nervous system happens in water with the use of ionic calcium okay and so think minerals being so important but ionically charged minerals and the human body loves hexagonal structured water so without a good balance of acidity alkalinity almost every system in our body has to work harder to maintain even a small degree of health and so we kind of go back to those, you know, slides with all the symptoms and potential health issues. Uh, one, uh, you know, good uh, uh, article uh, for for summary would be water hydration and health, and this is the information on it. And uh, I just want to say, sweet potatoes can't lie. <laughs> and you know, we have sweet potatoes that we put in uh, in jars of water, different types of water, and you see how um, after a week, you know, um, how they've responded. So my question to you is, which potato do you want to be? <laughs> well, based on that, right? <laughs>
the one that's pretty. Which potato do you want to be? Best? I know it looks like the one that's most uh, leafy, right? <laughs> right. So it looks alive. It, it it's rooted extremely well. It's got leaves. It's 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 alive, right? Like you want to gravitate towards it. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And which one do you not want to be? That's probably the better question to yeah, ask. Yeah. Well, the one that looks all. One, two, dry, three, dry four. Dry only. Yeah. The one on the far right. This, this one? <laughs> Right, so it has not given off any any sprouts. It hasn't grown. It has not thrived, and it hasn't even done much in terms of the roots. Right. So, which one? Which water do you think this is in? Um, I don't know. What What is it? The one on the far right. Correct. Um, maybe just tap tap water. I would guess maybe. No, actually, this is this is reverse osmosis water. Oh. So even if even if our reverse osmosis systems have minerals that are added in, because the ionic the, because the electric charge and the structure of the water is is not what it needs to be naturally, nothing that we add to it can improve its quality. So, do you want your body basically to bathe in this, or do you want it to bathe in this? Mm -hmm. This is electrolyzed reduced water from, from the uh, particular uh, water ionizer machine that I have. This is, uh, I believe this is tap water, and this one is well water from somebody's well. So uh, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you um, joining us today and uh, allowing me to go through this very, very quickly. And I am here for answering any questions. And feel free to email me if you uh, if you would like any any more uh, information or if you want to share. So, Catherine, thank you so much. What an awesome thank presentation! Thank you for your time. We have had so many questions come in. Like I feel like the whole time I've just been going through. Um, we are actually going to pass a lot of these questions over to Catherine um, after the fact and have her maybe reach out personally as need or as you see on the, the screen right now, her information, um, her email address, websites um, are available there uh, for reaching out and contacting her directly. Um, I just think, man, I have a lot of improvement and let's start with hydration. Let's start with it, let's start with it today. And it, uh, I'm sitting here going, oh my gosh, I need to like double the amount of water I take in every day. But uh, obviously the benefits uh, far outweigh not doing it. So I need to do that. Uh, you know, dentists are, uh, especially holistic dentists, it's kind of a new, new and emerging market. It's becoming more and more uh, accepted. And a lot of these conferences that Zyto goes to for holistic dentistry, um, our technology fits very well hand in hand with what their what um, you know their mission uh, is, and so starting out in the balance system, you start to find and see you know how the wellness of a to of a tooth can impact you know different areas of the body, and uh, you can find those different comp components. We call that vectoring between systems, uh, glands, teeth, meridians, things like that. All those different components uh, play a role in how an individual feels in their overall overall wellness. Um, I just want to thank again, uh, Catherine, for your time uh, being here with us. Our next uh, wellness webinar will be, take place on November the 6th at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. We encourage you uh, to register, attend live. These little giveaway things that we're doing um, are going to be a, a, a core part of these webinars moving forward. And so make sure that you set apart that time. It's only about an hour every month. Um, we hope to bring valuable uh, educational components to, to these webinars. If you have feedback or thoughts or suggestions as far as topics or things that you'd want to learn about, um, or you're interested in maybe being a presenter, uh, please reach out to us either at um, the email address events at zydo.com, or you can call out to us and we would be happy to, uh, to work with you guys on that. And hopefully we're always trying to improve these webinars to make full use of your time. We know it's valuable. We appreciate you being here with us today. Catherine, thank you again for presenting. Everyone in attendance, we're thankful for you uh, being here today with us. And until next time, keep scanning and we'll chat with you next time.